Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at this, the runout on the desktop CNC. Now, I've been getting a lot of questions over the past month or so on this about what the runout looks like. So what, I, what I've done is I've got a di dial indicator set up here uh, on a jig, and it's up against the bit, which is in the collar. The collar has two set screws, one on either side, 180 degrees from one another. Uh, I've got an eighth inch... Um, I think two flute end mill uh, mounted up in there and uh, I've got the gauge generally zeroed out you know you can see just sitting here it's flopping a little bit between one and zero just sitting there I'm gonna try zeroing it out again and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little bit of a turn so you see as I touch it, you know, I can actually move it a little bit just by putting force on it. I am flexing it, so there is some flex in it. I'm putting quite a bit of force, and I'm getting 0 .07, 0 0.07.08, again, with quite a bit of force against it, which is probably going to be realistic uh, the tougher the material you're cutting through. So uh, there is a little bit of flexure in it, and this is one of the things that I spoke about, is it has such a long throw here that it is going to be a little bit susceptible to lateral forces pushing against it like that. But uh, letting off, uh, I'm going to zero this out, and I'm going to spin it around and see what, uh, what we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it about a quarter of the way around, and so I'm down about negative 0 0.04 millimeters and I'm at about 0 0.07 it's a little bit hard to turn 0 0.08 0 0.7 and then roughly as you saw it kind of back down to one or zero so about, I'm going to say, runout is, on average, the highest number there, I think, was 0 0.08. But, you know, as you can see, it's uh, point, about 0 0.05. And part of that, there's 0 0.7, 0 0.076. And so, you know, again, it's not too bad. I would say about, on average, about 0 0.05 millimeters of runout is probably what this is going to be averaging. Actually, what I would be a little bit more concerned is the flexure in the whole structure as I push against it because you're going to get, you know, here I'm putting a lot of torque and I'm getting like 0.18 as I push it. And, and again, depending upon the pass of the material you take, it, you know, is going to be the, the the uh, push, you know, the flexure of the bit. Now, the piece is obviously the flexure, this is going to happen in the direction it's moving and not so much, you know, in a lateral sense of back and forth. So uh, that's actually not too bad. Uh, and again, if it's cutting in a certain direction, and you notice, uh, again, it's. Uh, so let's zero this out and just take one more quick look at it again. Um, make sure I'm still up against there, and it's about it's still about the same. Now that I've I've recentered it and moved it, it's coming out to the positive where it was coming out to the negative before. Um, so it's going to be I think a it's going to be still under point uh, point one millimeters because we haven't even gotten up. Uh, to that yet. And, and again, part of the reason I say that is you notice it goes plus and minus. So like I'm negative 0 0.01 and then I'm now positive or, or you know, I'm now positive 0 0.01 so that's really a movement of 0 0.02 because I went from the negative to the positive past zero. Um, so but again, it's not really bad. I haven't had a problem with runout on this guy um, since I've had it now, again, I'm not going to I'm not going to machine, uh, air, you know, uh, aircraft parts or anything <laughs> with it. But for a hobbyist machine, I think the tolerances of this little motor are, are, are you know, well within bounds. Um, also, for doing circuit boards, I've tried a couple mock-ups using the 60 60 degree angle um, uh, bits. And it's done good. I have not had a problem with it. Now, I haven't done any production boards with it yet. Again, I've just experimented with it. 
and it's all come out pretty good. So anyways, I know a lot of people were, were interested in the numbers on this, and, and here you go. Um, and again, I've done this actually a couple times off camera too, just so I'd know what to expect when I went on camera. And uh, again, these are pretty much the general repeatable results. And, and again, a lot of it when you go to turn this is it's, I'm torquing it. Now, the other thing is, obviously, the bearings in the bottom of this motor aren't the best in the world. So, and, and that's where the run out is really coming from. So you're going to get kind of, um, you know, a little bit of variation in each pass just because you'll be on the good side of the bearing and then, you know, the balls will roll over because it is, I think, ball bearings in there. Because you can kind of feel them as I move this. As I wiggle this, you can feel the bearings in there are just a little bit tiny. So you're seeing a little bit of that. However, not bad at all. Uh, now, Zeroto Labs pointed out something interesting, and I may give this a shot, is actually taking the spindle out in the future and replacing it with a high-speed brushless motor uh, from like a drone or a copter or something like that. I think that would be a real interesting uh, project. And, and those guys, the... Uh, uh, well, I have never put a dial indicator on it. I think, you know, because of the RPMs at which they spin at, uh, actually would be very interesting for a high-speed spindle for this. So I see that as a project coming in the future. Thank you, Zeroto Labs, for getting me in some more trouble. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to machine a collar to go up here uh, where this motor is and then receive the brushless motor and then... Uh, the brushless motor will fit in this, the same collar that this fits into and I'll have to figure out a way to actually mount it but I probably just drill some holes in whatever collar I make so the collar will cinch to the motor and then the motor will cinch down because again one of the things uh, that's really important is you obviously want to keep this very square and that's probably how I'll go about doing it then come up with some uh, drive electronics to actually run it uh, with uh, you know electronic speed uh, controller so Anyways, hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, again, the subscribe button is going to be coming up over there pretty soon. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. If you are, thank you. Uh, any comments, hit us up below. And uh, hey, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.